Thank you, uh, <clears throat> Secretary of State Davey. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure for you and your country to host this very important third clean energy ministerial. Uh, we today have a great responsibility <clears throat> and an opportunity. Uh, we have a responsibility to uh, our shared energy and climate challenges and the opportunity to do this by advancing uh, the technologies by helping each other use those technologies in the most efficient way possible uh, would add to our combined economic growth, our energy security, and expand uh, access to energy for many people in developing countries. The Clean Energy Ministerial is uh, something that started, as was noted, in 2010 uh, because we saw there was an opportunity to engage in an international dialogue but one where we weren't really going to be focused on uh, who pays for what, whose fault it was, things of that nature. But let's just stop that and see if we can help each other in any way possible. And we picked several topics that uh, we thought could lead to concrete advances. Now this is the third, and I think by the fourth, what we should do on the fourth would be start to get a scorecard, give ourselves colored grades, <laughs> green, yellow, red, uh, of what was stated in the first two and how far we are along on that. You know, if we wanted to get a major advance in clean, uh, efficient appliances, how many countries have actually started standards? And you know, let's grade us in a fair way and perhaps uh, uh, that would spur us to do some of the things that we uh, int were intending to do. Um, let me just state that uh, you talked about a public-private partnership. Uh, this is a very important part of, of what we do, uh, and it, it's really with the public sector that you can get sustained investments. Uh, so right now, our agenda includes eight public-private roundtable discussions in this meeting, organized with the help of the World Economic Forum. We, um, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, progress we've made in some of the efforts. We've made a big effort in appliance efficiency, uh, this is what we consider still our, one of our most promising efforts. This is to introduce very efficient equipment and appliances in countries uh, with the very simple idea that with the energy efficient appliances, appliances that actually cost no more than their inefficient, inefficient counterparts really save money. Uh, I've in fact been doing a study in my uh, spare vast spare moments uh, and tails ends of 12-hour uh, airplane flights uh, that and looking at appliance standards and um, whether when you put in appliance standards whether the first price actually is affected by the standard a new engineering standard and what about the life cycle cost the cost of actually owning the appliance and paying for the energy it uses and it turns out that the first price always follows what's called the learning curve the price declines year after year after year, whether there's appliance standard or not, the presence of a standard does not decrease that decline. In fact, it might increase it. But at worst, uh, it's as if you never had an appliance standard. However, if you look at the cost of owning the appliance, that plunges. And so there's no, so the lack of appliance standard does not mean you uh, are allowing your people to have access to appliances. You're just allowing them to pay more energy to use those appliances. And uh, this has now been appreciated in dozens of countries all over the world for several decades. Uh, I should say that um, there's another advantage of keeping these appliances off the market. Uh, I've seen with my own eyes that if uh, many countries, including the countries that manufacture these appliances, they're not allowed to be sold in their country, they want to sell them in other countries. So unsuspectingly, other countries will be the dumping ground of things that their own citizens would not allow to uh, be, have bought. So it's a very simple measure, you just don't allow them in your own borders, and surprisingly you will find that uh, uh, good equipment gets uh, sold to your citizens and with essentially the same prices. So I, I think it's, uh, it's what we call in the United States a no-brainer, uh, <laughs> loosely translated. Uh, it will save your citizens money uh, and your country energy. Um, this, by the way, is not about setting standards, a single standard for all countries. 
standards have to be adopted to each country. But one can set about a standardized program testing, let's say, a refrigerator at two or three or four different ambient temperatures, and then you can decide and a standardized testing procedure. So you compare one refrigerator to another and compare it and how it would perform in your country's weather and climate. So we are talking about more standardized of testing. You can have grades and, and how they should perform. So that's uh, one of the other things that we need to talk about. Uh, I also want to talk about the fact that we now have a clean energy online solution center. It's essentially um, a coal center. More than uh, 10,000 users from around over 150 countries that visit, visit this website. It's a library of more than uh, 1,300 clean energy best practice policy resources. Again, you can decide. Uh, these are policies that might have been tried in one country. You can decide whether it's transportable to your country. Uh, and you can tap the expertise of a team of policy specialists uh, at no cost. It's, a, it's a really a, a nice help center, um, and you don't even have to buy a product <laughs> in, order to, <laughs> in order to use this help center. Um, uh, it was mentioned in an earlier meeting yesterday uh, about uh, closing the gender gap in energy. We too feel that this is very important, and for example, South Africa's held a workshop to support business women interested in the clean energy sector. And in the United States, we're launching a clean energy ambassadors program to help mentor promising young women in the field of clean energy. And so these are a few of examples of the things we're doing. Uh, during the next two, year, two days, we want to hear more about the steps we've all taken and the steps we'll need to take. Uh, essentially, uh, we would like to hear pleasures of what you intend to do the following year. And again, uh, it's uh, now that we're old and we're three years old and maturing rapidly, uh, we can begin to uh, keep score of ourselves and keep the pressure up. Uh, this is um, just the start. If you think about energy efficiency and the building, uh, the rebuilding of infrastructure in established uh, OECD countries, the building of new infrastructure in developing countries, uh, there's a tremendous opportunity to build an infrastructure that literally could be twice as efficient as the one that was built in the previous century. Uh, so that's a very exciting prospect. It will um, do a lot to stimulate the world economy, the economy in each country, and of course it will do a lot um, to help our environment. Thank you.